What's up guys, M3PRT here. So we all know that the Model 3 comes with a pretty sizeable frunk, but opening and closing the bonnet isn't all that convenient. So in today's video, I'm going to go through what it's like to install your own automatic power frunk system. Let's get started. I purchased the automatic frunk system from a company called Hensho. After I purchased their automatic boot system, I was very impressed by the quality, so I trusted that their frunk system would be of the same standard. The power frunk system cost about 490 euros, including shipping to Ireland, and this is also including a 15% discount, which I found from another YouTube video that I'll link in the description. About two weeks after I ordered the device, the package arrived. Inside the box, you'll find two power struts, a control unit, a wiring harness, and a cable motor system. So now that we know the basics, let's get started with the installation. The first thing you'll need to do is open the bonnet and remove the plastic cover at the top. Next, you'll need to pop off the latch cover and disconnect the cable from the front button. Then you'll need to remove the entire plastic tub that occupies the front area. To do this, you will need to unscrew all of the connecting bolts. There are seven bolts in total, one connected to the window washer fluid cap, two at the top of the tub, two at the base, and two within the latch area. Once these have been unscrewed, you can remove the tub by grabbing and lifting up underneath the sides. You'll hear a few clicks as the clips holding in the tub pop out, and then you can simply lift up the tub and remove it. With the tub removed, you can finally get to see the guts of the Model 3. You have the brake fluid, cabin air intake, 12 volt battery and washer fluid, and then beneath all that, you have the electric power steering system and steering column. And directly above that, you have the thermal management system responsible for maintaining ideal battery pack temperature. Next, you'll need to replace the old struts with the new automatic power struts. The struts come out really easily. You can just pry off the metal clips at the top and bottom connection points using a flathead screwdriver. The new struts install really easily as well by just clipping over the ball joints. Clip on the bottom section first and then the top. Once you've installed the struts, then you'll need to install the new latch system. Simply unscrew the right side bolt holding in the original latch, insert the new latch system such that it looks like this, and screw the bolt back in. Next, you'll need to install the emergency release cable. This cable is attached to the soft close motor and needs to be routed out to the tow bar connection socket behind the front bumper. You'll need to remove the protective cover over the tow bar area by pushing in at the top right section. I would recommend using a flathead screwdriver covered in cloth to help pry out the bottom left section of the cover because if you push too hard on the top, you may risk cracking the clips. Once the cover comes out, you'll see that it's attached to a cable You'll want to route your emergency release cable alongside this cable. Once you push the cable through to the front bumper, you'll be able to pull it out through the tow bar hole. Then once you've pulled out the cable, you can wrap it against the original cable using some electrical tape. Once you've done all this, then you can put the cables back inside the bumper and replace the front cover. You can now attach the latch motor mechanism onto the plastic cover of the active air cooling system using the 3M adhesive stickers provided in the box. Once this is all done, then you can start connecting the wiring harness. First, we will disconnect the original latch cable and connect the handshow cable. In case you're wondering how you know which connections go where, all the connection slots on the wiring harness are different, so they won't be able to fit into the wrong connection points. The original connection is then plugged into the mail socket on the handshow harness. Next, we'll do the same thing with another socket located on the left side of the frunk. Again, disconnect the original cable, connect the handshow cable, and connect the original cable to a mating plug on the handshow harness. Next, you'll need to connect your ground wire to the grounding point on the left side of the frunk, and connect your fuse to the positive terminal of the battery. Now you can start connecting all of your cables to the control unit. You'll have to route the strut cables under the protective rubber layers on either side of the front area. For the right side strut, you'll have to route the cable over the center supporting metal bar and secure it with some cable ties. Then you just need to connect the cables. Again, in this case, all the cables are different and they're color coded as well, so you can't go wrong. Lastly, you need to connect the power cable to the fuse and also connect the buzzer. Once these are all connected to the control unit, then you'll need to test the system. To test the system, you need to connect the original frunk button to the diagnostic mating connectors on the wiring harness. Once these are connected, then you need to trick the latch into thinking it's locked by pressing a screwdriver down into the latch mechanism. Then you need to press the frunk button to see if the latch will release. You need to perform this maneuver twice to make sure that the latch lock and release mechanism is working properly. While the front button is connected to the diagnostic mating connectors, you might as well now change the setting for the speed of the closing mechanism. 
In order to do this, you need to hold down on the button for five seconds until you hear a long beep from the buzzer. Two consecutive beeps means that you're on the slowest setting, while six consecutive beeps means that you're on the fastest setting. And this is the setting that I used. Once this is all done, then you can disconnect the front button from the diagnostic connectors and reconnect it back to the original connection. Then you can fully test the system. If you press the front button, the bonnet should start to close. What you'll want to test is whether or not it can latch on and close the bonnet properly. If it can't, then you'll need to make some adjustments to the cabling by adjusting the nuts shown here. Once you've tested everything, then you can place the control box inside the static proof bag that it came in and place it inside the rubber protective cover which came in the box. Then you can zip tie the front to make sure no water can get in, position it on the centre metal support and zip tie the whole system to the metal support to ensure it's secure. The last step involves just tidying up the cables to make sure that they're secure and also to make sure that they're not chafing off any sharp pieces of metal. Once this is all done, then you can replace the original front tub and also the protective latch cover. Before you screw in the front tub, you'll need to make sure that the bonnet is still able to close correctly as the front tub does add some additional thickness and the latch may no longer be able to correctly latch onto the bonnet. If this is the case, then you'll need to make some further adjustments to the cabling I showed previously. So what's the system actually like to use? Well, since it interfaces with all of the original cabling, you can still use all of the ways to open the front as before, such as through the smartphone app, key fob, front button, and touch screen. However, one thing to note about the touch screen is that while it is able to open the bonnet, it's not able to close it since when the bonnet is opened, the button becomes greyed out. However, you can still close the bonnet using any of the three alternative ways, such as through the key fob, smartphone app, or through the front button. In terms of noise, the suction-based latch mechanism seems to make quite a bit of noise prior to and directly after opening or closing the bonnet. This seems quite strange considering the latch mechanism they use for the trunk works in almost complete silence. In terms of the struts, these are reasonably quiet and if you already have the trunk system, then they sound exactly the same. In terms of safety, there is an anti-pinch mechanism, but it is quite strong, so if a child's hand got caught in there, there would definitely be some serious tears. Aside from that, the quality of the system seems very good and the functionality is great since it interfaces with all of the original Tesla equipment and accessories. The installation was also definitely more straightforward than the trunk system and it took less than half the time to install at about two and a half to three hours. So that's it for today's video. As always, if you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comments and be sure to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more Tesla videos. Until then, I'll see you in the next one.